Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm making a follow-up video from my vacuum forming video that was posted this week and has been quite popular. I put the video up on Monday and then on Wednesday it got posted on hackaday.com and then it's had 8,000 views in about 48 hours and I've had roughly a month's worth of traffic to my website in that period too. I've had quite a lot of questions through email and YouTube messaging so I'm going to try and answer some of the questions today. Um, some of them I can't answer, so I'm afraid I can't help you with how to build an arbitrary prop. There are forums for these things. The RPF.com is the main prop building forum, so it's worth going along and having a look there if you need some advice on building props. Unfortunately, I can't help everyone individually. Lots of the questions are about the heater, which I'm going to answer in this video today. So I've got the heater here. As I said in the video before, this is a quartz patio heater. It's rated at 2 kilowatts, obviously it's in the UK where the mains electricity is 240 volts. Somebody pointed out that in the US it's only 110 volts at 15 amps, which gives you about 1650 watts is the most you can get from an outlet. So I guess you'd have to make do with a smaller heater, and possibly you could use two heaters plugged into two outlets. I'm going to just turn this heater on now, and let it warm up. There have been um, quite a few questions about, obviously, safety. What with it being on a wooden floor and in the bottom of a wooden box? The main thing to remember that is that it is a domestic appliance. So um, that, that can, it can operate quite safely lent up like this. The back of it doesn't get hot at all, and neither to the sides. So um, I've actually used this heater in the winter lent up as it is like this on carpet and on wooden flooring. And, you know, it's quite safe to touch. Basically, it is a domestic appliance, and that's one of the main advantages to using it. So it's just warming up there. Obviously, the heat comes out of the front, and it's got uh, some reflectors in there, which make the heat come out of the front. Obviously, rather than the back, is still completely cold. It's cold metal. I can pick this up and hold it. So there's not really a hazard of burning the floor. The box itself, of course, is covered in foil on the inside. And that's foil that you'd use in the kitchen, you put it in the grill for cooking food or in the oven. So you probably heat your oven or grill up to probably excess of 200 degrees centigrade. And that foil obviously doesn't catch on fire. So that basically stops the box from burning. The box itself will get warm with repeated operation, but it doesn't get anywhere near enough to combust, as somebody said. So that's slightly warmer at the edge there, but you know, it's quite safe, it's up to temperature now. It's quite safe for me to grab hold of it. I can touch the back and it's not even hot. Obviously if this heater was hung on a wall on its bracket, you had it in a workshop or shed. Um, if it was in a wooden shed and obviously it got that hot at the back that it could set fire to wood, then you'd end up burning your shed down. If it did get hot enough to burn the wood, then obviously the frame that holds the plastic would burn as well. I've got the frame here. If it really did get that hot, then obviously that's the, the face that goes down onto the heating box. It would be all blackened and burnt. The other thing is they would also, of course, burn the sheet of plastic that's held in there, and that would be no good because it would blister and eventually catch on fire. Obviously, the main thing with this is that it heats the plastics gently and softens it, but it doesn't actually burn it. So I guess the main answer to that is that the heat is there enough to, to heat it, but it doesn't set fire to everything because it's not that hot. I mean, I can still put my hands here. It feels uncomfortably warm but my hands aren't burn, burn, the flesh isn't burning off, okay, so... The next main question that was asked was about the vacuum cleaner that I'm using. So I've got it here. This is just a domestic vacuum cleaner. It is a Dyson, which uses cyclone technology, so it's a bagless vacuum, and so it always has suck no matter how much dust is in there. It's rated at 1.4 kilowatts, it's fairly, uh, fairly sucky, so... Um, basically you could use another vacuum cleaner like a shop vac and I'm pretty sure this would be capable of doing bigger table as well. So if the table is two to three times the size I'm pretty sure it would still work just as well. It sucks the air out quite quickly and it pulls in quite a lot of detail. So um, I don't think you have any issues really. You don't really need to get a big industrial pump or I've seen some people building a vacuum chamber and shuck, um, sucking the air out of the, the vacuum chamber and then using that to um, pull all the air out to get a good pull. So I don't know what, whether um, vacuum cleaners aren't up to as much in other countries, but this works perfectly well. A point that got raised quite a few times was about why I drilled 200 holes in the base. So 
this is the table and as I said I drilled all these holes in here with the drill manually. Several people said that you can buy a pre-drilled pegboard, which is the sort of thing you have on the wall in a tool shop um, for putting pegs in and hanging tools on. So typically those boards are quite thin, they're made of hardboard which is quite flexible. There's quite a lot of pressure pushing down on here when you've got the vacuum on and the mould on there and the sheet of plastic. So obviously you could put reinforcement underneath or you could have several big holes in a, in a sheet of MDF and you could put the pegboard over the top. But basically, you know, it didn't take very long to drill all those holes. It was only about 20 minutes, just with a hand drill, one after the other. And uh, basically it fits perfectly, so, you know, the table's quite neat and tidy. There's no random layers and bits of wood supporting things. So, it just, at the time, seemed sensible just to make the table all nice and square and then just go and drill the holes, because, you know, why not? If you're going to do a job properly, you might as well just, just spend the extra 20 minutes just to, just to make it work properly. And the other question that got asked quite a lot was, can I make you an Iron Man suit, or an R2-D2, or a C-3PO, or some other costume? Unfortunately I don't have time to make other people costumes at the moment, as you can see my Iron Man isn't actually finished, and neither is my alien suit. So I really want to concentrate on getting those done first, which I'll be making some more videos about, and probably then I'll move on to some other projects, so I probably still won't have time to make you one. As I said, if you go to the rpf.com you can look at um, other people building projects and you can find out techniques to make projects for yourself which is half the fun of prop collecting. So that's everything I have to say this time. I have some more videos coming soon. Thanks to everyone who liked my vacuum folding video and everyone who subscribed. See you next time. Bye.